fine inside, drugs and multiple weapons, along with a seven year old who was playing inside. Several people living in the basement with the guns and drugs. Police say most of them were migrants. Mayor Eric Adams has announced a plan to house as many as 2,000 asylum seekers at a tent complex on Randall's Island in the East River. Place to stay. They further say that the city should be addressing the needs to increase shelter capacity. And those we talked to today say they want to get jobs so that they can get back on their feet and support their families. Guns, drugs in the house, ketamine, children in the house. Armed toting migrants. When police raided a group of armed migrant squatters in a Bronx basement flat, they discovered a drug cache in an area that was used by a small child, according to the police. According to NYPD Chief of Patrol John Chell, the eight suspects were apprehended by the police after they were summoned to the Hull Avenue residence last Wednesday at approximately 10 p.m. over a complaint of a man carrying a pistol. According to Chell, when the police came, they observed a man standing in the driveway brandishing a weapon at someone. However, he said, the suspect fled as soon as the police approached and made his way back into the building's basement. The man with the arm, who the officers subsequently identified as 24-year-old Venezuelan Hector de Souza Villalta, was allegedly pursued by them before being tackled. At that point, according to Chell, another man from Venezuela named Javier Albono, 22, attempted to exit the basement covertly while carrying a pistol under his arm. But the cops noticed him, and before long, he was also restrained, Chell continued. Two other firearms, including a supposedly ghost arm, three longer mags, a box of ammo, a bag of ketamine, and a bag of ketamine combined with cocaine, were discovered by the authorities when they searched the residence, according to Chell. The seven-year-old child was also present, however, it's unclear who the child's parents were. Eight people were detained by police and charged with criminal possession of a weapon, criminal possession of a controlled substance, and acting in a way that would harm a child. Police arrested eight migrants believed to be squatting inside of the basement of this home that you see right here. But A group of migrants found squatting inside an apartment in the Bronx were arrested on gun and drug charges. This is a relatively quiet neighborhood. Uh, these people have been the noisiest. They've been there about six months. Fine inside, drugs and multiple weapons, along with a seven-year-old who was playing inside. The individuals were D'Souza Villalta, Alborno, Yoyaro Martinez, age 42, Johan Cardina Silva, 35, Urban Lozado Munoz, 25, Yossi Pino Castillo, 20, Miguel Vamondes Barrios, 42, and Jefferson Orlando Abro, 39. Chell claims that D'Souza Villalta and Alborno, who are both already well-known to the authorities, were ordered to be kept without bond. D'Souza Villalta has an ongoing case from August 2023, when authorities claimed he shot another immigrant in the leg after a dispute in Yonkers over a woman. However, Chell stated that the victim's refusal to comply caused the attempted murder case to collapse. On the other hand, authorities say that Alborno was detained in the Bronx in September of last year and charged with possessing a loaded gun. According to Chell, despite the Bronx District Attorney's plea for $10,000 bond, the judge released him without any conditions. Barrios, the third suspect, is wanted in Pennsylvania and New York for shoplifting and retail theft. He was detained on a $25,000 bond and could be brought back to those states to answer to charges. Several of the suspects are also under invest investigation for robberies, including a robbery pattern in Bergen County. Several people living in the basement with the guns and drugs. Police say most of them were migrants. Armed group of migrants allegedly selling drugs after taking over this multi-family house. Those guys have been next door for about six months. Squatters. The landlord is in the process of trying to get them out. The remaining accused were either freed under supervision or on their own recognizance. According to Chell, the building's owner informed police that he didn't know any of the residents residing in the basement. The landlord claimed that he had first rented to a man by the name of Eduardo. Chell continued, and he's taking the suspects to court to have them evicted. The involvement of a number of the suspects in robberies that occurred in Bergen County, New Jersey, is also under investigation. However, Police stated that they had not yet been charged for that. Eight were arrested last week. 
The DA's office was asking for bail, but six were set free. The eight people who were arrested are facing several gun and drug charges. Cops arrested him along with seven others. Another man, 22 year old Javier Alborno. Guns, drugs in the house, ketamine, children in the house. Rental issues in NYC. Late last month, Mayor Eric Adams announced that the city was shortening its deadline for adult migrants in shelter, who now have 30 days to find alternative places to stay, down from a prior 60-day limit announced in July before they need to reapply for placement in the system, which officials say is at capacity. But securing housing in a city known for sky-high rents is proving difficult for newly arrived immigrants many of whom lack work authorization and the type of documents needed to rent an apartment. Of the six people City Limits spoke to about their recent searches, only one was able to find and rent a room. Another is paying a co-worker to sleep on a sofa, and the rest are staying in overcrowded spaces with friends of friends or acquaintances. Maria, Rebecca, and Lorena, three friends who were staying at an emergency shelter in Manhattan, were issued a 60-day notice to move to a large tent shelter on Randall's Island. They declined the transfer, fearing it would lose their privacy and make it difficult to commute to their jobs. After being accepted into a two-bedroom apartment in Queens, they started searching for alternatives. The Adams administration has said its shelter system can no longer accommodate new asylum seekers, with over 113,000 arriving since last spring. The city is at capacity. That is the message from Mayor Adams regarding asylum seekers. Mayor Eric Adams has announced a plan to house as many as 2,000 asylum seekers at a tent complex on Randall's Island in the East River. Despite the city saying there's no more room for new asylum seekers, hundreds are arriving here daily. And who are going to be kicked out of the only roof they've had over their head while they came, when they came to the states. The city has issued 60-day shelter notices to 13,500 migrants in shelter while another approximately 690 have received a 30-day notice. The Department of Homeland Security and the Biden administration have criticized New York City for having no exit strategy for asylum seekers in shelters. City Hall has pledged to provide intensified casework to those given shelter deadlines and announced a three-tiered, color-coded strategy to indicate how much assistance an asylum seeker needs in leaving shelter. MedRight, an urgent care company running the Holiday Inn shelter, did not respond to a request for comment about aid provided around resettlement. However, migrants who spoke with city limits said the only options they were given were transferring to the Randall's Island tent shelter or receiving a travel ticket to destinations outside the city. After being told she'd be transferred from the Holiday Inn shelter, Lucy, who asked that her full name not be used, for fear of losing her job at a plastics factory in the Bronx, said she considered moving to North Carolina, where an acquaintance offered her a job. She asked shelter staff and was told help with a bus ticket would be immediate. But after doing the math, she determined she would make more money in her current job than cleaning hotels in the South, so she stayed in the city. After leaving shelter, the 57-year-old rented a co-worker sofa for $150 a week. I didn't know she had cameras everywhere in her apartment, so I don't feel comfortable," Lucy said in Spanish. I have no privacy. Andreas, who was also staying at the Holiday Inn in Lower Manhattan, declined the transfer to Randall's Island too. He left the shelter system on September 7, thinking he might be able to find a room in his budget in Jackson Heights, Queens. He walked around and called every rental ad he could find. I found a listing at random and I called, Andreas said. Of the several places he tried, this one only asked for a one-month, $600 deposit to rent a bed in a room with two bunk beds for four adults. The rental included use of the apartment's bathroom, but not the kitchen. Neither Andreas or Lucy received a lease or other signed documents as part of their rental deals, highlighting the vulnerabilities immigrants can face in the city's competitive housing market. But right now, we have no space, so wherever they can wait, they are, they are waiting. As his administration claims, the city surpassed its housing limit to shelter the tens of thousands of asylum seekers. Place to stay. They further say that the city should be addressing the needs to increase shelter capacity. For people to be supported to get out of shelter and into permanent housing, and that continues to be our ta top ask in this moment. Housing Challenges 
In 2022, Citizens Committee for Children analyzed housing data and found that immigrants, especially non-citizens, are more likely to experience rent burden. Immigrant households, particularly Latino households, are also more likely to live in overcrowded housing. We have heard of one person without a lease, living in an apartment with a makeshift wall, said Adama Ba, who has been helping those arriving from the Texas border. Lack of a credit history, credit score, and social security number required by most landlords to apply for an apartment has further complicated migrants' search for housing. Though many have found off-the-books work, they may not have a formal work contract to prove it. Many of us have not been able to rent because of lack of documents, said Carlos, 26, a Venezuelan immigrant who had also been staying at the Holiday Inn. He and other Venezuelans will be aided by President Biden's recent decision to grant the country temporary protected status, which opens the door to legally live and work in the U.S. The Biden administration is offering temporary protected status to them, and that impacts a large group who have sought refuge. And those we talked to today say they want to get jobs so that they can get back on their feet and support their families. Who are already here, but many of them tell us they're hoping this temporary benefit isn't a temporary fix. Immigrants should be able to come to the U.S. and should be able to apply for a work permit. The Adams administration has urged the White House to further speed up work authorization for other asylum seekers, who under federal law face a 150-day waiting period before they can legally seek employment. The other major hurdle is saving enough money for the deposit, one month's rent, and broker's fee, often required for New York City rentals. Carlos and his partner are living in the house of an acquaintance who opened her doors to them temporarily but constantly asks when they are going to move out. We would need at least $2,000 to be able to move into a room, Carlos estimated, saying they hope to have enough within a few weeks. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.